first theories regarding the origin of the moon was that the moon had been derived or broken away from the Earth, and that the Pacific Ocean, in fact, was the scar that was left. That theory has been rejected for a variety of reasons, because when tested, for example, against the chemistry and the knowledge of the density of the moon and the Earth, it simply doesn't fit. Dr. Harold Urey has been one of the um, most prominent persons in the concerned in the development of the ideas on the origin and development of the moon, and many of his ideas have stood the test of the Apollo data. In this short film extract of a talk that he gave in 1972, he explains why he rejects the suggestion that the moon broke away from the Earth. The moon is an odd object in this array. It uh, consists of about one two hundredth of the total mass of the terrestrial planets and is a very odd object, not like the others at all. Uh, it was uh, suggested by Sir George Darwin that the moon escaped from the Earth. Uh, this was made in order to account for its density. If uh, the moon escaped from the Earth, it should be a part of the outer part of the Earth, which has a low density and would not contain much of the core, at least, which has a high density. This has proved to be difficult to accept because the space program has uh, developed the uh, uh, chemistry of the moon in much greater detail. In the first place, it contains some very high uh, boiling silicate materials. Uh, there's a lot of uh, aluminum uh, calcium silicate, for example, known as anorthite in the outer parts of the moon. There's also some basalt and other things, but no granite has been observed. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it uh, contains little of certain volatile elements. For, for example, potassium has a low abundance relative to uranium. The potassium to uranium ratio in the moon is about 2,000 to 1, whereas in the Earth it's 10,000 to 1. In the meteorite, 60,000 to 1 or something like that. Uh, it does not seem possible that we could skim off a layer off the surface of the Earth and put it into the moon and meet these chemical conditions. It does not e seem probable or even possible that the moon escaped from the Earth. One of the physical facts uh, of gases is often overlooked. If I compress a gas, it will then expand back again. This is well known. But one that isn't so well known is this, that if I have a large mass of gas and I compress it, I get an increased amount of matter in the part that is compressed and that has a gravitational field that attracts the material around it. And as a result of this, if it gets large enough, it will not expand again. It will snap off and become a gas sphere. And I have been uh, led to believe by very competent people in the field that a solar nebula would, not, would be gravitationally unstable. And if it is gravitationally unstable, one will have gas spheres of some kind or other formed as a result of this. If one fixes the density of the gas and its temperature just right, it will be large enough to produce a moon. Professor Runcorn and I uh, thought possibly that the moon has a cold core instead of a hot core. Uh, we thought probably the moon accumulated at uh, low temperatures with small particles containing a little magnetic, a little iron, falling through a, a cold gas and uh, forming a sphere of solid material at low temperatures. Of course, particles falling, magnetic particles falling like this in the presence of a magnetic field uh, would become more or less oriented and when we get through, we would have a nice magnet, great big magnet, say going out to uh, a half of the radius of the moon. 
It would then uh, have heated up due to radioactivity in the material, and as a result, it would get about what is called the Curie point, uh, named after the Curies, uh, which uh, for iron is 780 degrees uh, centigrade. And uh, then uh, the magnetic field escapes and would disappear and would be just what we observe at the present time. Dr. Urey rejected the moon as having been derived from the Earth because of differences in the chemical composition between the two planets. But those same chemical differences are also a problem which arises if the moon originated by the accumulation of fragments in a coal gas cloud at the same time as the Earth and the other planets, as Dr. Urey explains in a continuation of that same talk. Is it possible that the moon is indeed a primitive object? Did it uh, get made from solar material while it was distributed in a disk about the sun? And did many other moons of this kind get made by a similar process at the same time? Well, there is a difficulty about the iron abundance. The abundance of iron in the moon must be about 15, 10, 15%. Whereas uh, the present ideas about the abundance of iron in the sun would make material of the kind of the moon uh, having a density of about uh, 3.8 or something like that, and uh, an abundance of iron of about 30, 35%, like the Earth. If the moon is indeed a primitive object, with a low abundance of iron in its makeup, we have to make planets that contain considerably more iron. And whatever else is true, it looks very much as though we must make at least mercury with a greatly increased proportion of metallic iron in order to get its high density. So this is a problem that faces us in any case. I have thought that possibly after the moon's were formed uh, in gas spheres. The gas was blown away by a T Tauri star. That is a star that has an enormous burst of energy, possibly due to deuterium burning, uh, which blows the gases away. And we have then a bunch of uh, lunar type objects about that size colliding with each other and make a, a mess of finely divided silicate and rather larger metallic iron objects about, and uh, that solar wind uh, of a more vigorous type than we have at the present time blew some of the silicate materials into space and left behind a higher concentration of metallic iron. And then this accumulated into the Earth. And there is, again, a difficulty. We have to worry about why was it not 